Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, do another sanctuary vlog. Going right now to feed the uh, pigs and the goats. See them over here. Good morning. Hi, guys. Hi guys. Oh, it's okay. Look at Nilla and Kit Kat. And Toffee's the one that doesn't really like to be pet. Hi. Hi, Kit Kat. Hi, Nilla. Hi, Nilla. So today we might see about having them out and uh, grazing outside of their enclosure. We've been playing with the idea and trying to figure out how to do it. Oh my God, using Daisy as a step stool. Um, but that way we can get them to go out and graze. Uh, the problem is getting them back. <laughs> so might try that later today. Batunia, what are you doing? Batunia, oh, Batunia. Oh, this big pig. Oh, this big aggressive pig. This big aggressive pig. Oh, this Petunia. Julie! 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 Oh my goodness. What's up? Oh, hi. Hi. What's going on? What's going on, big girl? Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. So read in the comments, Julie's either your favorite part of the video or the worst part of the video. And people are like, I love her screams. And people are like, I just mute the part where she shows up. Because she's so loud. Oh, look at that belly. Look at his belly. Oh, you're so loud. You're so talkative. Those big floppy ears. Look at those ears. Look at those ears. Clovey. Oh, look at that girl. Crazy. I'm crazy girl. That's a big stick. Can you carry that? Get that stick. Get it. Get that stick. Get it. Get it. That's, that's pretty big. I don't know if you can take that one. Go get it. Get it. <laughs> oh, Clovey. Get that stick. Get that stick. Come over here and check on the tortoises. I like to sit in these little nice spots, getting some sunshine. We got Fergus in the back. Let's see who else we got. There's one over there. I'm only seeing half of them, but they're in here. <laughs> half in your enclosure is so big, it's hard to find them. Hello, pigs. Hello, piggies. So I just collected up a bunch of fresh chicken eggs. That's a turkey egg there on the top. So they uh, keep on laying eggs in my little woodshed area, even though they have nesting boxes. But it's a nice little haul of eggs for the day. So we eat them and then we feed most of them off to the animals like the coatis and foxes. And on the alligator front, we've got more work going on over here with the fencing going up. And then here's the third pond that's being tamped down right now and getting ready uh, for concreting this week. Really, Cupid? This is what you do? Why? Why would you do that with your empty bowl? Why would you do this, Cupid? That is gross. Bad Cupid. Hi, Foxes. Hi, Hazel. Hi, UA. We're here to uh, collect the bowls and do diet prep. Hi, Kira. Crazy, yeah. I'm trying to say hi, Clovey.
You trying to say hi, Jet? Yeah? You trying to say hi? Oh, Clovey. Oh, look at him wagging his tail in there. He's so happy. You guys making friends? You guys making friends? <laughs> Let him down. Go, girl. Oh, is that fox sniffing you? Is that fox sniffing you? Yeah. You go, girl. Look at that skunk. Oh, 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 look at that skunk. Look at him. You stomping? Are you stomping? That's how they play. They'll stomp at you. Are you stomping? Yeah. You little stinky skunk? Are you stomping? Oh. Here, Sammy. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so now time to wash all these dirty bowls. And now the whole stack is clean and we're good to go for food prep. All right, so we are in the new uh, food prep building right now. And so we have everything set up down here. We've got all the different kinds of foods inside of their uh, airtight bins and everything, all labeled and whatnot. And we've got uh, a lot of our food over here. We have an awesome person who is buying us a fridge that's gonna be delivered. So we're really excited about that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we got, yeah, everything's set up. This is pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start doing food prep in here. This is like the first time we're doing it in here, actually, so it's pretty cool. Um, but we don't have very much produce. We really need to go out and uh, pick up some, so we're kind of working with the bare minimum right now. But um, let's see. We'll go ahead and start with the quaddies, I guess, because our bowls are already out here. So bare minimum is still pretty gourmet, extravagant. Um, very minimum by our standards. Okay? Most people, they just dump kibble and that's that's what they've eaten is literally dog food. So for our bare minimum, it's still all, you know, fresh food and fruits and everything like that. So so this is some canned chicken, uh, chicken breast and water. And uh, some, look at Bam. Bam, this is not for you, Bam. No, it's not for you, Bam. Uh, she smells it, I smell it. Man, that's pretty strong. Uh, but what's funny is some of them will not eat the drumsticks. Some of the quaddies won't eat the drumsticks, but all of them will eat this stuff. So, go ahead and try it. Oh, that's so gross. This is not for BAM. So what we actually did to uh, cut costs over here is we used the same material, the LVP for the floor, to make into the countertop. And uh, so that really helps out on cutting costs and just wipe up everything right off of it, just like you would if it was mopping on your floor. Um, so we did separate that knife out, so we're not going to use that when we cut the other things. We don't want to cross-contaminate, you know, the meat with the fruit. Um, let's see, we'll do some banana food, or banana food, baby banana food, banana baby food. Something like that. I don't know. It's got bananas made for babies. It's early, guys. Okay. I always like to smell all this weird stuff. Because they're really big on smells. Alright, so now we're going to do some squares. Not for BAM. But uh, yeah, so every day we do switch up what we're giving them and change it around. Trying to make it interesting for them so they're not getting bored. So if you didn't know, these seeds of apple have cyanide in them. Now, it's a very, very small dose, small concentration, but over time, it does add up. So you don't want to be feeding your animals the seeds that come with the apple. Once or twice isn't going to make a difference, but over time, yeah, it's definitely not good.
Alright, so now we're gonna cut off some watermelon here. Bambi is convinced this is for her. I'm in a smaller pieces just so a lot of times animals look for their favorite thing first and they just throw everything else to the side if it's a big chunk of something that just gets chucked to the side then it gets all gross and disgusting you know so I like to cut smaller pieces that way if they do throw it to the side like at least there's a chance it's not all of it and throw this out for the chickens they're gonna be very happy here you go guys look at that Nothing goes to waste here. No, it really doesn't. We got the cleanup crew over there. All right, so now we got some freeze-dried raw duck. So that's a freeze-dried raw duck patty. <clears throat> now you have two excited dogs. Mmm. Mmm. Little beans. Oh, what do we smell this? Does it smell good? I know. Not for you. There you go, Bam. You didn't earn anything, but you're too dumb. Now we're gonna give him some apple chips here. These are some dried apple. Some all in one daily essentials for one support. Can we get one of these each? Yep. All right, looks pretty good. So there's our super simple, lazy kawadi breakfast. All right, so they're, they're done. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the foxes. So we're gonna start them out with the joint supplement, like we just finished with the quadis. So we're gonna get some of those. This will be for the three uh, red foxes from the fur farm, and then Jet the fennec fox. Uh, we've got some reptilinks, and this one is cool rabbit. So this is whole ground rabbit. You know, it has like the, the collagen casing and they're all hand wrapped and tied. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's very nice. I don't envy that job. <laughs> okay. We got those. Um, let's see, we got these. The duck caddies again. We're gonna feed you to something, Bam. And then let's give them a little bit of watermelon as well. Sorry, I don't sound as chipper as usual, guys. I had to drive the six hours back from Miami last night, so you can hear I'm just extra tired. I really love it in the comments when people say, wow, you look tired. Makes me feel... <laughs> but no, I, I know I, I am tired. I did the six hour drive last night. So. And you had to stop and pick up animals. And, yeah, and I had to stop and pick up the birds, which we're going to get to uh, in a minute here. 
Blow it. Sounds like rain. He's starting. I'm gonna give him some watermelon too. So we're also gonna do uh, some carrots and cucumber. Try the fox sauce. Bambi just stole the watermelon from the chickens. Bam! You gremlin! Why are you such a little gremlin, Bam? <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna give the foxes some exotic canine diet. Now, this is not regular dog food. This is exotic canine diet made by Missouri. And Missouri is a company that formulates diets specifically, like species specific, and they do it for zoos mainly. So if you guys ever watch what I'm doing in the videos with Casper and I give him a gator chow biscuit, that's made by Missouri. And so they're really good at making these very specific diets for their animals. Um, again, this is not dog kibble. It's exotic canine diet because we get people like, oh, you're feeding them dog food. No, that's not what this is. And then now we're going to give them coconut water in here too for hydration, which I think is just so extra, but Gabby insists. So we also have laxatone that we're going to give for Jet. Since he is a desert species, he doesn't really drink water. And so because of that, he has some issues getting things going. So. Uh, we do add some laxatone in there, and that's also why doing the um, coconut water is really good for him, too. Alright, so now we're doing the skunk. So, first, her favorite thing in the world are peppers. I think we should just leave it the way it is. I don't want to rip this thing apart. That's a super, super special treat for her. She's should we cut it in half? Yeah, let's cut it in yeah. half and then she can husk the rest. And then we'll do a raw patty for her too. This is like Christmas dinner for this skunk. <laughs> it's way more food than she usually gets. All right, so now we're gonna do the bird diet. So we've got, um, let's see, we've got two cockatoos together. We've got the three little birds together, three little parrots together. Uh, Olaf, I'm assuming you're doing a separate diet for inside. And then uh, we've got jelly bean, Zazu, and Petri here. So first we'll do the, the chop. You wanna talk about what's in the chop? Yeah, so this is the Bird Tricks seasonal feeding system. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a seasonal diet, so the recipe changes every four months and you incorporate things that are in season. So in autumn, you know, you do squash and then in the summer you do other things. What do we have in here? We have like peas, carrots, a little bit of whole grain pasta, different kinds of like grains, beans, quinoa. There's a bunch. Peppers, Brussels sprouts, carrots. So you can check them out. They have a whole recipe book, again, bird tricks. And that's what our birds are eating. And we really like it and they really like it. Yeah, and what's crazy is Gabby makes all that. So like you get the recipe from bird tricks, like they're giving you, you know, what's in there, but Gabby actually just takes it all in the kitchen with a big giant blender thing and like sometimes a five gallon bucket and it's just, beating out this bird tricks diet <laughs> well this time because i actually am out that's our last bag we're gonna do it in here <laughs> oh okay. so thankfully our kitchen's not gonna be a mess because it's definitely a process but 
So people do ask uh, what animals eat once a day, twice a day. It varies by species. So right now the birds are going to get this uh, right now. And then later for dinner, they're going to get pellets. We have rowdy bush pellets. Um, so uh, a lot of people have asked about bird food. What should they eat? Uh, most people just feed their birds a whole bowl full of sunflower seeds. And that's like feeding your kid a bowl full of candy for dinner every day. So you want to make sure you're giving them a proper diet and not just sunflower seeds. Do you want to show what the parakeets eat? Um, <laughs> So even our parakeets, this is what they're getting. So Gabby made that all up together. So we're gonna feed them in a little bit. Right now, I need soft bill pellets. What are soft bill pellets? They are non-existent. Where are they? They're inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me go get this. So this is the soft build diet we're talking about. And uh, this is our first time doing food prep in this building. So I thought it was in here, it wasn't. But yeah, so um, we give this to them. Now, uh, this is very specific because the soft bills, those would be the toucan and the two horn bills. And they are very prone to hemochromatosis, which is an iron storage issue. And so we have to give them low iron pellets, okay? So they can't eat like just anything regular. So all the different kind of food that we feed them has to be very specifically low iron. And that also has protein then too, because they need protein. A lot of people think too can like just eat fruit. Not they true. don't just eat fruit loops? Oh. Okay, so now we're gonna cut some uh, cucumber up for them. Now, uh, for them, I do cut these up really small because they will not um, chew their food like a parrot or something. What they do is like, like if, you, if you just gave this to one of them, what he's going to do is he's going to take it, that whole piece, and he's going to shake it violently until he rips off everything but the piece inside of his mouth. And then eat that piece and just, just graffiti the walls of the fruit. So that's what they love to do. So that's why I make sure that we do uh, cut these up very small. Bambi wants a piece of cucumber. She's being very patient. Bambi wants everything. Bam! Do you want cucumber, Bam? All right, so now I'm gonna chop up some watermelon. All right, so these are all done. So we're ready to load them up on the golf cart and go feed everybody. All right, so I hit my head on that so hard the other day. Yeah, so we can load these up, lower that stack so it won't fall. So now we're in the golf cart, heading over to feed everybody. I'm gonna drive through safari here. Come here, Jet. Come here, Jet. There you go. Oh, look at that, huh? Come on. He's like, where's my ground rabbit? And he took the reptilink. Or no, he took the duck. That's what we got. So normally he is just a fiend for that ground rabbit. So that is his absolute favorite thing in the world. And uh, we didn't have any today. So it looks like he grabbed the duck first, but either way, by the end of the day, this will be empty. <laughs> That's what he always does. Asami, there you go. You got a whole smorgasbord today. 
Look at this, you got so much food today. Oh, freeze red raw patty first. So I shouldn't go over the corn first. Now we're gonna feed the foxes. So we have a double door here, so Deb is gonna go ahead and close that door before we open the next one. And they're going crazy. So we've been having some trouble with Hazel bullying everybody. All right, so we're gonna hide one over here. If she can figure out how to get in logs. There's, there's a hole on the other side, hon. Nope. You're not the smartest in the group. Close enough. I got UA. She's enjoying that. Got Patty up there. Hazel. Hazel has become very dominant in the group and she is bullying uh, everybody out of their food and causing some pretty big issues with it. So we're talking about uh, building a separate enclosure and putting Hazel by herself, or not by herself, getting her another fox. That way we would be saving another fox and uh, separating them so that she stops bullying these two. These two are very submissive and they seem pretty bonded and happy with each other. I mean, look. They can eat right next to each other, no problem, but Hazel just is crazy and bullies everybody. So, so we're gonna get her a boyfriend. Yeah, so- A neutered boyfriend. The idea there is that the male will be more dominant. Is Sometimes they bond better. Um, different, you know, sexes bond better, male and female, like a pair. Sometimes with females, this happens. Um, I'm not a fox expert, but a lot of fox people that I was talking to said that this happens sometimes with girls. So, and even th like you said, they are definitely bonded, but even if they kind of were starting to have problems, at least it's only two and we can separate them pretty easily rather than three. So yeah, the hopes are that a male will, uh, will chill her out a little bit. <laughs> you don't think lockouts would solve this? I don't think this is just a food issue. It's not? No. She gets possessive over toys. She gets possessive over spots. I watched her go after Kira for going under that palm tree, and I don't want them to have to live in fear. Right. So we can get her a male that maybe is a little more dominant, and it will chill her out. And of course, because everyone's like, you know what happens when you put a male and female together. Yes. Yes. People in second grade knows what happens when you put a male and female together. We spay and neuter everybody, so that's not an issue. But yeah. I see you. Look at her face. She's like, how do I get it? All right, so now we're going to go ahead and feed the kawadis. What happened to the weather is what yeah. I want to know. It just got crazy windy out of nowhere. I don't know. We do this aren't you glad that we did lockouts <laughs> don't you think to yourself thank goodness we did lockouts everything should have lockouts i think the boxes should have lockouts i think lockouts are the greatest thing ever Yep. 
No, no. <laughs> she your favorite? <laughs> Takes her time. So scooping the poop. Yay. And then tomorrow we're gonna do the deep clean. So you can see they just get a track of just dirt onto the wood that we're gonna bleach tomorrow and do the deep cleaning. We do that once a week. Um, just because they get, you know, they just track the dirt and they walk through poop and everything else. And even though we do this every day, it still happens. Glamorous. Glamorous life of being a sanctuary owner. That's why they pay me the nothing. <laughs> Best non paying job ever. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and feed the parrots while the qualities are still locked out, and that gives them a chance to all eat and not steal food from each other while they're locked out individually. Jelly bean. Oh. Got your blueberries, jelly bean. Yeah. All right, so these are the little uh, budgies that I just picked up yesterday from South Florida. And we got another little cockatiel right here. And uh, so we're gonna put them into the aviary with everybody else. What's crazy is picking up these ones. Um, we got them from Palm Beach Parrot Rescue and the person that uh, gave them to them, one of the little budgies was dead, wrapped up inside a toy and they didn't even know. Like, just so sad. So this aviary is really for the ones that are not friendly, not adoptable, that would not make very good pets. So these are exactly that. They're not very friendly. So I'm going to try to uh, gently take that off. is clipped, can't really fly. Look at this foot, what's that doing? Does that foot work? Doesn't look like it works. Don't bite me. What do you think of that foot? I don't know. What, what is that? I'm not sure. So we Looks like he's clipped. He's definitely got a weird foot. But we're gonna let him sit in here, see how he does. Maybe he just needs to adapt. The foot's working now, but um, definitely needs to get those uh, wing muscles working again and get used to flying around and the feathers grow in. And yeah, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on him and see how he does. Let's go ahead and let out the budgies. This is gonna be chaotic. All right, guys. Nice and slow.
What do you think? Chaos. Some of them seem to be really happy, like immediately. Other ones are definitely having to figure it out. You can tell they're never agile flyers yet. They've got to learn how to really fly. And they're kept in small cages, you know, they don't really properly develop their wing muscles and they don't develop the skill of flying. I mean, they have to learn, you know, so a lot of people think that birds can just magically know how to fly. It's like, no, if he's never flown before and then you throw him outside, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to fly. Um, now, they'll figure it out over time, of course, but they do have to figure it out. This one has one leg. Oh. <laughs> Is he missing a leg or a foot? A foot. foot. Oh my gosh. Crazy. So it looks like this branch fell and knocked the aviary tarp off. Hi, Bean. You enjoying looking outside? Yeah. Look at him. So, well, he's happy because he gets an outside view, but. Uh, tonight it's getting down to like 38, so I gotta put this thing back up. All right, what are we doing now? So I'm trying to get this tarp back up. It was so windy, it ripped right off. I think that branch is what took it. Oh, really? Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> and that, that would explain it pretty well. Luckily, this is built to like withstand a hurricane, so. <laughs> Tarp isn't. Okay, did you figure out is it tonight that's getting low or tomorrow night? Tomorrow. Tomorrow night, okay. Oh, the beautiful sounds of birds singing. For real. I was wanting to redo this anyways. I don't know how this seems like it slid down, but is still attached. I don't know how that makes sense. It doesn't. <laughs> so peaceful. So peaceful. I'm track of my life over here. Thank so it's been warming up quite a bit, especially during the day. Um, it's been up in the 80s during the day, but at night it's still dipping down, but less and less. We just have to, I can't wait to take these things off. I hate having all the birds wrapped up and you can't see them. Uh, so, well, it does help with the sound. But um, yeah, hopefully soon we'll be able to take all this stuff off and you know open it up and whatnot. Uh, but really, we gotta wait till like the end of March. I mean, you can still have cold snaps through March, you know. So we just want to be ready. You don't want to have a sudden night where it gets down low and gotta redo this whole thing after you just took it down. So basically I had to redo almost the entire thing. So we don't fear for a while now. Just about done. Just getting the last bit now. All right, so this is the prairie dog enclosure that we had built, um, but it was retaining too much water on the bottom. Well, it's not holding water. We have drainage. It's just holding moisture too much. Um, which leads to fungus. So we had to pull the prairie dogs out. So they've been inside every single day I get about a dozen comments. What happened to the prairie dogs? They're just in the house. 
um, you know, that's that's all. But so we got to redo this whole thing. So what we're trying to do is put a layer of uh, basically larger rocks and rubble and uh, whatnot. And then we're going to put these smaller rocks on top of that and then the sand. So that way we have a better layer. That way it doesn't hold moisture as much for them. Uh, so finding bigger rocks has been hard. We can buy the little ones, but we have not been able to find a way to get a hold of these larger ones. So we're just going around the property now and getting a bunch of this scrap concrete and whatnot, breaking that up and then putting it in there. So that's what we're doing. So we got a bunch of random uh, concrete scrap and whatnot from putting in the well and then putting in the pond. So I try to break a bunch of this up and load it up. Well, this kept going on for about two hours of just collecting more rocks and cracking open more cement and all that kind of fun stuff, but that doesn't make for the greatest video, so I kind of stopped filming at this point, but either way, that kind of wraps up this video, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed it. You know, it's just another day of the sanctuary, a lot more work to be done, but uh, this one's gone on long enough, so as always, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.